This guide is for the updated XPMS-E by Groovetama and Dual Sheath Redux by NeoValen. Let's get started. Let's first go over some prerequisite mods you're going to need. So head on over to the Dual Sheath Redux page and look under the Requirements section. Each requirement can be clicked on and you'll be linked to their pages in order to install them. The first one up is SKSE. If you don't already have it, you're going to need it at some point. Installation is very simple, and it's just copy-paste work into your Skyrim game folder. If you really need help with this part though, there's a video link to a helpful tutorial by Gopher. Next up is the Java Runtime Environment. Super self-explanatory, just download and install it. We need this because the Dual Sheath Redux patcher was written in the Java language. More on that later though. The rest of the stuff we need can all be found on the Nexus, but only download them for now. We'll install them all together later. Go ahead and download SkyUI. You're going to need this for in-game options through MCM menus for both XPMS-E and DSR. Now we're going to leapfrog over to the Recommended Mods section since one of these should really be under the Required section. 4's New Idols or FNIS is absolutely crucial to make sure things go smoothly when it comes to installing new animations and skeletons. Since we'll be working with both, go ahead and download it or you'll regret it later when things go wrong. Trust me. Under the main file section of FNIS, you only need the topmost option. Notice that it says you'll need to run the FNIS generator. We'll get into that later once we actually install it in the Nexus Mod Manager. Lastly, we're going to go back to the required list and look at XP32 Maximum Skeleton Extended, or XPMSE for short. I saved this requirement for last since the XPMSE has its own set of required mods in order for it to work properly. Take a look under its requirements section and you'll notice a couple different lists depending on your mod setup. For everyone in general, the latest SKSE is required, which we already have. You'll also notice it says FNIS, which we already have too. Now you should also see Realistic Ragdolls in Force, which we need to go and download. On the Realistic Ragdolls in Force page, the best option for most people, including myself, is the Realistic option. Only choose one of these and hit download. We need this mod because without it, we won't be able to move any dead bodies around, and other bugs may occur as well. Back to the XPMSE mod page, you'll notice two more lists of required mods. If you use Race Menu, you're going to need the latest version of it, so make sure it's up to date. If you don't use Race Menu, and you don't have to, you can alternatively use Enhanced Character Edit. You don't have to use that one either though, and basically as long as you aren't using Race Menu, you're going to need the mod listed below called Net Immersive Override. If you do use Race Menu, don't install Net Immersive Override since it's integrated in the latest version of Race Menu by default. Moving on, you can now go to the main file section of XPMSE and download the latest version. Now that we've downloaded all the required files for Dual Sheath Redux, we can finally go to the main file section for its own mod page and download it. With that, we should have everything we need to make it all work. The hardest part is already over, so stick with me. Now let's open up the Nexus Mod Manager and install it all together in the right order. First, let's install the easy stuff. Install Net Immersive Override if you're like me and not using Race Menu, and then install SkyUI, FNIS, and Realistic Ragdolls in Force. Now let's install XPMSE. When you click to install this, a FOMOD installer is going to show up. Let's go through it together. The first thing you'll see is a quick little changelog for XPMSE. Basically, there's an MCM menu now, which is where we'll be choosing our weapon positions and animations. Let's focus on getting there first though, and hit the next button. Now we choose what type of skeleton we're going to need. This will all depend on your mod setup, but in my case, all I needed was the HDT version. Click on each one and read their descriptions in the top right. The skeletons below the one I chose are for people who need more animated body parts for breast and butt physics. Obviously, if you don't use those types of mods, just select HDT like I did. The next page will have some plugin options depending on your mod setup again. Everyone is going to need the first option selected called XPMSE3 plugin. If you use Schlongs of Skyrim along with Race Menu, you'll pick the second one, and the third one is very specific, so again, make sure you read the descriptions and only pick it if you absolutely need it. Down below, the style randomizer options are specifically for Race Menu users and completely optional. I didn't select any of them. When you're finished carefully selecting your options, hit the next button. Now, on this page, you'll see some animation options. Most people will keep the default options, and I highly recommend that you do. I'm not going to even bother covering the bottom list of options. Yeah, moving on to the next page. You should now be seeing a long list of animations. 
All of these are completely optional, and I only recommend selecting animations you're already familiar with from their original mods. Most of them are from the mod called Pretty Combat Animations. Again, completely optional, and I didn't even bother selecting any of them. When you're ready, hit the next button. Don't untick any of the options set on this page unless you know exactly what you're doing, and hit the next button again. This is a tricky one for some people. Not all of you will know this, but many of the new animations and weapon positions aren't visible in first person, which can throw some people off. There are some animations and ways around it, but none of them are very good and without bugs. I personally don't recommend that you try any of these options at this time. One thing to keep in mind is that if you do use the Joy of Perspective mod, make sure you pick that option. Don't pick this though if you use other similar mods like Enhanced Camera. It won't work. After that, we're finally done setting up XPMSE, and you can hit the Finish button. Now an overwrite prompt should show up asking if you want to overwrite something from realistic ragdolls in force. This is perfectly normal and completely necessary. Select Yes to Mod. You may have other mods that involve skeletons and you will want to overwrite those as well. The golden rule here is that XPMSE is greater than all, at least when it comes to skeletons. Since XPMSE also has animations now, you may want to install animations on top and overwrite those from XPMSE. That's fine as long as you know what you're doing. I'm going to remind you later, but never ever overwrite skeleton NIFs from XPMSE. This includes custom races. Let's move on to installing Dual Sheath Redux now. Similar to XPMSE, there will be a faux mod installer once you double click to install. It may take a minute or two to fully impact the mod, so give it some time. This one's way shorter and easier to go through. Unless you don't use any modded weapons, you're going to want to make sure both of the first boxes are selected. Make sure Mod Packs has a check in the box and hit Next. Next, you're going to be asked if you use Swords on Back or at least plan to. This will depend on you, but in my case, I will be doing that, so I keep it on Yes. For this next page, only select this if you use the Skyrim Weapon Delarpification mod. If you don't even know what that is, ignore this and hit Next. Now you'll see the Mod Packs, or in other words, a long list of modded weapons that are compatible with Dual Sheath Redux. Not all weapons are supported, but if you use one of these mods, it'll automatically select the mod pack for you. Scroll through the list and make sure it picked all the right mods, and hit Finished. Now we're finished installing all the mods. It's time we make our way to the Skyrim data folder. The easiest way to get there from here is to go to the top of the Nexus Mod Manager and hit the Open folder with the red arrow. Next, select Open Game Folder. Make your way from there into the data folder at the top. After installing Dual Sheath Redux, a Skyproc Patchers folder was added here inside the data folder. Find it and open it up. Keep going until you see an executable jar file called Dual Sheath Redux Patch. Double click on the Dual Sheath Redux Patch to run it. Make sure you double click it and not right click and select open. It actually makes a difference for some. A new window should pop up and in the top right corner you select Start Patch. Now sit back and let the patcher do its thing. This can take a couple minutes, so leave it alone, even if you think it's frozen. Once it's finished, it will automatically close. Now go back to the Skyrim data folder. Scroll down your list of mod plugins and double check to make sure a new dual sheath redux patch.esp has been added. Now scroll back up and find a folder called Tools. This folder was added when you installed 4's new idols. If you don't see it, then you either don't have the mod or forgot to install it in your Nexus Mod Manager. Open up the folder and you'll have two options. Open up the Generate FNIS for Users folder. Inside here, you'll see an app that you need to run called Generate FNIS for Users. Sound familiar? Yeah. Go ahead and double click on the red app with a large F in the middle. An orange and white box will pop up with a bunch of stuff you don't really need to understand or worry about. At the very bottom, make sure you have two boxes ticked on under patches. You need gender specific animations and skeleton arm fix checked. If you don't have both of these ticked on, you won't be able to see your shield raised while walking in game. With those two patches selected, hit the big yellow update FNIS behavior button and let the app do its thing. After it's finished, you can hit exit. FNIS is really, really important, and I can't stress enough that you'll need to run this anytime you change animation mods or skeleton mods as well. I recommend adding the FNIS app to your taskbar, or make a shortcut to your desktop to make things easier. Now go back to your Nexus Mod Manager. It's time to do one last thing before going in-game. 
In your plugins tab on the left, scroll down to the very bottom and make sure the new dual sheath redux patch.esp is there. Now make sure the white box next to it on the left is ticked on just like the other plugins. I say this because mine wasn't by default. With that, we're finally finished installing all the mods, patching dual sheath redux, and running FNIS. We can now safely load up the game. Alright, with all the hard stuff out of the way, we can finally have fun adjusting the weapon positions and animations. At this point, you'll have to wait until the MCM menu shows up in-game for XPMSE. It will show up at or near the bottom of your MCM menus list. It didn't take long for mine to show up, but you can also install a mod called Jackson's MCM Kicker, which will make it show up faster. While we wait, you can also go ahead and test to see if Dual Sheath Redux is working. I'm going to demonstrate using a series of Skyforge steel weapons and a shield. First, I'll test dual swords, sword and shield on back, dual maces, dual axes, and finally daggers as well. Obviously what we're looking for is a visible left-handed weapon and or sheath. Now, you may have noticed that some animations were already correctly set, and this is thanks to XPMSE, which comes bundled with many animations from the mod Immersive Animations. It's pretty amazing that it can tell what animation you need, but sometimes it needs some help, which is where the MCM menu comes into play. So go into your set of MCM menus now and find XPMSE. Once there, click on the Styles section. By styles, it really means weapon positions and animations that come with what you select. On the left-hand column, you'll choose weapon positions for what you wield in your right hand, and on the right, you'll pick where your left-handed weapons show up. Yeah, I know. It really should be the other way around, but there's nothing we can do about that. Anyway, let's say you wanted dual swords on back, or one sword on back with a shield as well. We can do that. Go under the sword section and select sword on back for the right hand, and then sword on back for the left as well. Once you go back in game, you'll see the change happen almost immediately. You don't even have to leave the game. What makes it better is that the animation is automatically switched for you to match the new weapon positions. I did find that I had to unsheath and resheath sometimes to get rid of the old animation first, but that's probably just a game engine limitation. Now if we want just a single sword and shield on back, we just have to switch to a shield now and the animation will stay the same. It's not the best animation, but actually works pretty well. At this point, I encourage you to try out many different styles, but keep in mind there may not be an animation for every single weapon combination. This isn't the best game engine, and there are many limitations. Some combinations, such as Sword on Hip and Shield on Back, can be found in the original Immersive Animations mod, and can be installed afterwards, overriding XPMSE's animations in the Nexus Mod Manager. You should only do this if you know what you are doing though, and never ever overwrite anything skeleton related, only animations. If you mess up, don't panic, just reinstall XPMSE last and rerun FNIS. You should always, always run FNIS when you change animations and skeleton mods. This includes uninstallation. Speaking of uninstallation, it's a simple matter of uninstalling everything you just did today and making sure to manually delete the dual sheath redux patch.esp in your data folder. Run FNIS one last time and you should be back to where you were before doing all of this. Just a couple more things to mention, there is a dual sheath redux MCM menu as well, and it's here that you choose to turn off shields and staves on back. If you decide to install more modded weapons and want dual sheath redux support, you're going to have to reinstall dual sheath redux and rerun the patcher, replacing the old DSR patch.esp. That doesn't mean you have to do everything all over again, just the dual sheath redux part. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and keep an eye out for more Dual Sheath Redux videos I plan to make in order to answer some frequently asked questions. Since I know Dual Sheath Redux doesn't cover all modded weapons, I've personally patched over 100 mods on my own mod page called A Lot of Dual Sheath Redux Patches. Check it out, and see if there's a mod you really like but wasn't covered before. I've covered some pretty major mods, such as Staves of Skyrim, Jay's Swords, and even some less popular ones as well. I'm Slothability, and subscribe for more tutorials, let's plays, and some mod showcases on my channel. Peace out.